Hi, welcome you all to my channel, The Excelism. Friends, this video is part of the series of videos on the statutory branch audit. In this video, I would like to discuss about stratified sampling. Generally, when we go to the bank audit, we simply take the random sampling. Random sampling will not rescue you when you get a question from the regulator. Every time when you wanted to take any sample, there must be a methodology for that. In this video, with just with the column of outstanding, one single column I consider as an outstanding, how we can analyze the outstanding column and how we can take the samples out of it. Since this analysis can be helpful, can be used in any, any CBS uh, environment, any file that can be loan balance file or CCOD file, I'm not specifically mentioning about the bank. Now, the column only required for me is the outstanding column. Since that is the only column which is required, I don't want any other column. Let me select this entire uh, data, hide, not required. From here, let me select all of the columns. Let me hide. No problem. Let the column be there only outstanding. Now, let me select this column. I will go to the insert. Let me click the pivot table. Again, I'm telling to all of you, outstanding is the column, will be there in every CBS report that can be CCOD file, loan balance file, that may be for Indian Bank, that may be for Bank of Maharashtra, that may be for Union Bank of India or Canada Bank. If you have outstanding column, you can start doing the analysis like this. Now, let me just click OK. Now, it has inserted a new worksheet for the pivot table. As it is only having one field, I will consider this field. Let me take this field and put into the rows. I'm not doing anything. Just taking the same outstanding, I'm keeping into values. Just taking the same outstanding, I am keeping into the values. Let me take the same outstanding, keep it into the values. One more time, keep into the values. What I have done, nothing except dragging and dropping of outstanding field into rows and the same outstanding field four times into the values. You may be surprising what I'm trying to do here. Don't worry. You will get some understanding once I start talking about the grouping. Now, what I'll be doing, since this is the row field, let me right click. There is a wonderful functionality in the pivot table called grouping. In pivot table, you can does the three types of grouping. One is number grouping. The other one is text grouping. The other one is date grouping. Friends, this number is actually, as I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a fabricated data, right? That means I changed the numbers. That's the reason decimals came. Just to overcome these decimals, what I'll be doing, you know, very quickly round this comma minus two so that everything will round off to the nearest hundred values now what i'll be doing i'll copy this data i'll pay special as a values i'm done anything i just rounded off my outstanding values just come back here right click refresh wonderful right now let me right click let me click group once I click group, it is giving me a pop-up message stating that, Sharon, I identified the smallest value is zero. Highest value is three crore, five lakh, 93,900. Now, by default, based on my starting value and ending value, it has given me a step value. Step value is nothing but a group value. Now, group value, it has given as a one crore. Sharon, do you want to arrange this entire data one crore as a group? Now, let this be for the time being. Let me click OK. Very beautifully, it has arranged the entire data into different subsets. Now, let me select this column, put in the comma format. You may be surprising why I have taken four columns. Don't worry, you can understand now. Let me right click, show values as percentage of grand total. Now, let me right click this. I don't want this time count, but I want 
sorry, I don't want this time sum, but I want count. Let me right click. This time I want the same count, but I want to show values as percentage of grand total. I want to reduce the column width by renaming my column names. This is outstanding. This is outstanding percentage. These all are the number of accounts, accounts, percentage. As you all know, this file is having 1026 accounts are there and above three crore, there is one account. About two, two to three crore, there are 13 accounts. One to two crore, there are 48 accounts. That means if you can do the audit of 6% of the accounts, that means total accounts of 62, you are almost covering 38% of your sample. Looking end to end of 62 accounts, time may not permit because the limited time we may get for three days or four days for one particular branch. And I'm only looking into the loan balance file. There is another file called CCOD file. So based on the number of days availability, you can categorize or prioritize this. What I'm trying to do, I want to make these two as a priority one. This one, I want to make it as a priority two. These all are the large advances I call. Large advance is not as per the LFR uh, definition. You may be confusing. Let me take a top advances, right? So what I can do, I can just simply double click this so that all these 48 accounts will come and I can just put because I only taken one column, I made a pivot table. So when I double click at this, only that column appeared. But when you take the entire data and you create a pivot table, then once you double click this, all those columns will appear here. Okay, just for the example sake, I only taken one single column. Now, this is priority two, priority two, right? Priority two accounts. Now, priority one accounts are these two. That means you need to double click this, and again, you need to double click this. Then 13 accounts will come into the new sheet. One account will come separately into the other sheet. Then you have to append both the sheets so that you will get 14 accounts as a priority one. But instead of doing that, what I can do, you know, right click, group. I want to restrict this entire one to three crore. That means I'm trying to tell to the Excel. Excel, yeah, sorry, not three crore. 2 crore because everything above 2 crore, I want to group together. I'm trying to tell to the Excel, Excel from 0 to 2 crore, you please group based on 1 crore as a step value. Above 2 crore, everything together, keep it as one group. Once I click OK, just check what will happen. Automatically, everything above 2 crore group it together. Now this is priority 1, this is priority 2. Let me double click. This and uh, this is nothing but the priority one accounts. As I always request, suggest, along with your analysis, your documentation should also happen. So if I go with the two staff, I'll also give the name of the staffs here. Let me take a staff name is Sharan Kumar. Another staff name is, let's say, Mr. Harsha. There are two people. Harsha will consider the priority one accounts. And uh, Sharon will do the audit of priority two accounts. Both these, okay, this is the analysis of stratification one. Now let me keep it here. I'm arranging properly because this act as a documentation for me. Many a times after the audit, we do the document documentation. But along with your audit, your documentation should create, right? Now, but what about the cases of below one crore? Are we going to ignore that? No. I have to make sure now above one crore, I have done everything. That means I'll allocation this work to Sharon, these 14 accounts to Harsha. But we also need to take a couple of samples less than one crore. Then what I'm going to do, I'll take another pivot table to avoid confusion. Let me go to the pivot table. Next, next. Let me click no, finish. 
let me take outstanding very quickly whatever the work i have done let me do the same let me put it four times it can be even a good practice for us let me right click this for the time being group for the time being i'm just taking whatever by default it has given it to me later i'll change it don't worry now let me put the comma format with zero decimal and this must be show values as percentage of grand total this must be the count even this is a count but i want to have percentage of grand total indirectly i'm trying to do the Pareto analysis whatever we learned in our school days now let's take outstanding this is outstanding percentage number of accounts number of accounts percentage wonderful but friends above one crore i've already considered here above one crore i've already considered now let me right click group ending at one crore between zero to one crore i want to consider five lakh as a range so that i will get 20 subsets 0 to 5 lakh, 5 lakh, 1 to 10 lakh, 10 lakh, 1 to 15 lakh, 15 lakh, 1 to 60, sorry, 20 lakh and so on till 1 crore. Above 1 crore, everything together as one group. Now let me click OK. Wonderful. Check it out. 0 to 4 lakh, 99,999. Uh, I'm sorry, because 0 is also there. That's the reason it has taken 4 lakh, 99,999. Otherwise, if we keep it as 1, from 1 it will take it. Anyway, fine. Right? So these all are, I've already considered as a priority items, priority accounts for my audit. Now I have to take the sample from this data because I also want to consider one account from every category because just by checking above one crore may not serve the purpose. That is not a real, uh, you know, the scientific way of taking the sampling. Okay, you are just considering top advances and you are doing the audit. No, we should make sure that we should also cover other accounts also, maybe small accounts also, some of the sample. So I have to take the sample size here. Let me, because it is a stratified sampling based on the outstanding figure, I want to consider 2% as sample size because already I have already taken almost like uh, 62 accounts which is almost contributing 38% of my outstanding. So since I already taken 32, let me take 2% of the samples from each subset. Now, if I say this into 2%, then what will happen? I get 8.82. That means I want to take 8% of the samples. So 8.8 .8 accounts from 441 accounts. But 8.82, it doesn't have any meaning, right? So what I'll be doing, I will take your round function up because I want to round off towards the nearest integer upside. You may ask me round function. If it is round, for example, if these accounts are only five, then 2% means 2%, five of 2% means it is 0 0.1. Okay, 0 0.1. If that is the case, when I use a round function, it round off to zero. But I want at least one account from every subset. If at all it is below one, it will consider as one. That means at least I make sure that I am taking one account from each subset of five lakh as a range. Now if I enter, copy, paste at the bottom, these are all of the samples I need to take. Now let's take the sum of this. These all are the 31 samples I'm taking. Considering sample size and these all are the total. And as I always mention, you have to allocate these accounts to the respective staff. Now let's say you have a list of staff. Maybe Sharon is there, Harsha is there, Maruti is there, Bhairav is there. There are a couple of people. Now what I'll be doing, I want to allocate all these samples to the respective staff. But I don't want to randomly allocate. I want randomly in the sense I don't want to allocate, but I want Excel to do the job. Then simply what I can do, I can take a rand between function. 
because there are four staff, one comma four, close bracket, enter. But this is only giving me which staff you want to consider. These two are not required. Let me remove this. Yeah, this is only giving me which staff I want to consider. Since four people are there, I want to consider fourth staff here, third staff here, fourth staff here, third staff here, first staff here, and so on. But I want the names. Don't worry. Simply use a index function and uh, take this range, right? Give dollar symbol, comma, then close bracket. What it is trying to do here, out of this range, out of this range, it's going to give some random number between one to four. If it is one, it will pick up first value from this range. Two, it will pick up second value. Three, it will pick up the third value. Four, it will pick up fourth value. Press enter. Wonderful. But the problem of random between is whenever you make X active, the random between will automatically activate refresh. Because the nature is a random between, it automatically changes. To overcome this particular problem, what I do first before doing this, let me copy this and let me paste here what formula I have applied below. Copy this, paste special values so that the formula will disappear, value will remain. When I can do the analysis like this, even after 10 years, if any regulator call me for a question, I can demonstrate him that, Mr. Regulator, this is the way I have taken the samples. Right now, let me take this as analysis stratification number two. So I am doing the analysis along with that. I am doing the stratification along with that. I am also taking the samples along with that. I am also allocating to the respective staff. Right. So let me stop in this video. In this video, let me very quickly recap what I have done. I have not done anything except one single column from the loan balance file or CCOD file, whatever the file you take for. Then I have taken into the pivot table. Four, same column I kept in the value labels, four places, and I have taken into the row label. I grouped row label field from zero to one crore, one crore to two crore, above two crore for priority grouping for the top advances. For the other analysis, I have taken here FILAC as the range. See, you need not to consider FILAC every time because I am talking in the video. Based on your size of the branch, you can decide. The size itself, you are doing the branch audit where it is less than 10 crore or less than 15 crore. I'm sure the largest, maybe the, the highest value of the advance, maybe 50 lakhs or 40 lakh. If that is the case, then you can, you can take a range of 2 lakh or 2.5 lakh so that you can get more number of buckets will be there and so on. Right? Let me stop this video. See you all in the next video.